Hi, my name is Bob Grunier. And I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So Henk Uren has done this rather funky wind hex analog using a domestic sucker blower. And what he's doing here is he has put in some tissue paper. And this is quite a good test compared to the tests we have already done because we already used wood shavings which were quite strong and resistant and a large steel can and so forth. But what he found was it kind of knotted up the material and you can see it's torn it and also he made some adjustments and it kind of shredded it. So here's our tissue paper before and here is our shredded tissue paper and so we can see that the action of breaking up material is already occurring even on this simple looking device. Now when I saw these twisted and knotted structures it reminded me of a test that I did last year with the Ultra device and deionized water so there's no contamination in the water and I ran it for about 90 seconds and this was the one that produced the coherent matter traveling waves in the aluminium foil aluminum foil but there were many other SEM images that I took and here is one of those and apart from the the double pit here with the th thing through the middle which I will talk about in detail at another time. You can see a train of three of these nodes. And here is an outy and here is an inny. And in the center of this outy, you can see um, this little blob here in the center coming out of the center. And if we look at that up close, you can see it's kind of a knotted material. So. Again, coming out of the center of this outie vortex, and you can see that it is this knotted blob of material here. So what was that? Well, looking under the EDX in Prague, uh, the brightest blob had, as one would expect, carbon, and as one would also expect, aluminium, so about... 26% by weight for aluminium. It also had some silicon, calcium and iron. And for reference, this isn't the best aluminium, so it has a few specks of iron in it. Um, but uh, silicon there. And then we have, <laughs> strangely, promethium. And that is a very heavy element. However, um, this might be a side channel. And looking at it, it actually is right on the promethium line, so maybe it is. It's got some line down here. Is it chromium? Don't know, um, potentially. Um, but uh, that was interesting. And looking at some other spots here, we have copper and zinc in this little blob, which really shouldn't be there. And we also have, again, iron, silicon, and carbon. And in the last of the sample points here, again, more iron, 26.5% iron in that case, in that little blob there. So is that contamination in the original material? Maybe it is, uh, but um, that's why we need to run these tests with ultra pure aluminium, which I had purchased the aluminium to do that, uh, but, uh, you know, we haven't seen it yet. However, interestingly, there is, in this case, calcium, and it's 10.5%, and this was using deionized water. It really shouldn't be there. So that is quite interesting to me. And whether this is promethium or not, I don't know. But given the fact that these systems would appear to be able to transmute matter, um, it would not overly surprise me, but... Uh, uh, lots more experiments need to be done. Anyway, so um, yes, essentially, this center of the vortex produced this knotted structure. And this kind of, and it's not the only one, there's quite a few that I imaged in this session. And it reminds me of this knotted 
structure here. So that is that. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.